Hello everyone, welcome to back. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and clear our panels and make the command for our command manager where we, can, where we can call that inside of our dialog files. So we can make the panels and we've added one to our cinematic panel here, but now we can't go back. We can't clear it and that presents a problem because now we can't see our characters or the background or anything else again. So let's quickly go in and clear out whatever panels we want after we're finished displaying the images on them. So we started out with a command called set layer media in the last video. In this one, I'm just going to duplicate this, and instead of set layer media, I'm going to call it clear layer media. Okay, so we'll clear the media, and let me just go ahead and make a private static. I, I can just copy this, right? I can just copy that, and then paste. Whoops, that paste everything. Did I just paste everything? I sure did. You know what? That's fine. It's because I have it uh, collapsed there. So. I enumerator, I was going to copy it because, man, I cannot type there. Okay. And we'll call clear layer media using a string array for all of our data. Okay. So instead, let's now call clear, mayor, clear layer media and we're ready to start business. Now, I've gone ahead and copied some of the code that we had in the above function. So the same parameters, well, most of them we're going to need. We're going to need the panel name. We're going to need the layer, the transition speed, whether this is immediate, and also the name of a blending texture if we choose to use it. And of course, we'll go ahead and grab the parameters by converting our data into a, a parameter class. And then the first thing that we try to get is that panel. So this is all the same as we've done above, just minus a few variables up there. And then let's go ahead and grab the rest of the parameters. The only other parameters we need to get is our layer, defaulting of course to zero. Then we need to try to get if it's immediate or not. By default, it will not be an immediate uh, clear. And then if we're not immediate, we try to get the speed of the transition, which will default to one or the normal speed. And of course, if we're using a blend texture, we'll also try to get the blend texture from the parameters as well. Lastly, we want to get the blend texture. So if we're not immediate and we have a blend texture, let's go ahead and load it from the blend textures default location. Now, all of this is the same. All of this I've just copied and pasted in here, minus those little variables that we're not using, such as using audio or the graphic we want to display, because they don't matter here. Uh, but all of this is just copied and pasted from the above function, so this is nothing new. Now let's go ahead and add in the new logic that will be specifically for clearing this layer. So we're initially defaulting this layer value to zero, and that means for the above function, if we didn't specify a layer, it would automatically use the first layer on that panel, which is layer zero. But when we're clearing media, maybe we we have the ability to either clear a layer or the whole panel. So instead of defaulting to zero, let's default to negative one. And if we remain at negative one, that means we clear the whole panel and not an individual layer. Otherwise, we specify the layer and we'll only clear out that layer. So that's that. And now let's go ahead and check so we can clear the right value. So if layer equals negative one, then we want to go ahead and clear the whole panel. So we'll say panel dot clear. So we're going to clear that panel and we want to make sure that we use the transition speed and the blend texture and if this is immediate or not, but our clear function doesn't take any parameters. So if we pull that up and we go to clear on our layer, neither of these are taking any um, of those variables. But if we look at the graphic object fade out, it does have the ability for us to specify speed and a blend texture. So let's start on our layer and go ahead and add a float called transition speed. So we don't mess up any of the other code we've written where it requires parameters. Let's go ahead and just make defaults for them. So transition speed will automatically default to one and then a texture called blend texture will default to null. So we don't have to specify any of those. But when we fade out, we're going to specify the transition speed and our blend texture. Just like so. And we'll just make sure that we have those parameters copied. And we'll go back to our graphic panel and add those to the parameters here so they're available to the panel and then we'll pass those in to the actual function here so we'll pass in the transition speed and the blend texture 
to the clear function on our layer. And that means in the command manager for our database extension, we can go ahead and pass in the transition speed and a blend text if we're using one. But we still need to specify if this is an immediate effect or not. So real quickly, let's go ahead and just add immediate onto the tail end of there. And let's go to the panel clear function and go ahead and specify bool immediate equals false. And we'll pass in immediate to the uh, layer clearing as well. And then go to the layer and add bool immediate equals false. Okay, so now that should satisfy all of those. And yes, it, indeed it does. We can see it works there. So back to the layer. When we're specifying immediate, now we can go ahead and actually put that to use. So if current graphic is not equal to null, now we need to check how we should destroy these objects. So if not immediate, then we're going to fade out. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and say current graphic and destroy, I believe, is private. Yes, it is. So let's go into current graphic. Down at the bottom of our current or our graphic object class, we have a function called destroy, which destroys this thing in the scene. So let's just move that to from private to public. And now let's go back to the graphic layer. And if it is an immediate effect, then we destroy instead of fading it out. And we'll do the same thing for every old graphic as well. So if immediate, then g dot fade out, otherwise g dot destroy. And so if we have a layer that is equal to negative one, that means the whole panel. So we clear out the whole panel with those variables. Otherwise, this is for a certain panel. So we need to try to grab the layer. So graphic layer, graphic layer equals panel dot get layer from the layer integer. And if graphic layer, it always wants to go to the class instead of the variable. If graphic layer equals null, then we know that something went wrong and we'll go ahead and say debug.log error and we'll log a message to ourselves saying, so we say could not clear layer on panel followed by the information that will help us figure out what happened. And then we'll just yield break because we can't do anything without a layer to clear. But if that has not happened, then we'll go ahead and say graphic layer dot clear and we'll pass in the transition speed and the blend text and whether this is immediate or not. So this should go ahead and allow us to clear layers as well. We can test this by coming into our test files and after we look at the cinematic layer, now we can say clear layer media and specify the cinematic layer. And that's all we need to pass in. Let's go ahead and just try that. Once we clear it, then Stella will say the cinematic layer should be cleared and we can see our handiwork. Okay, so we start off, we go to the cinematic and now we should clear it. Sure enough, clears up and we're good. Now, if I want that to immediately go away, I can just specify immediate is true. And then as we're looking at the cinematic layer, we click and it's immediately gone. Now, if we want to demonstrate clearing the layers on a panel, if we have multiple ones, then we can set the background to nebula again and then set the layer one on background to the spaceship interior. So we have an overlay. And then after Stella welcomes us, then we can go ahead and clear out the overlay on layer one for the background panel, which should just leave us with the space background. So here we are, we have a space, we say welcome, and then we click, and our top layer goes away. And we're just left with the space. Where otherwise, we could go ahead and just remove the layer and go ahead and clear out the whole panel. So we have the background, and then we click, and then everything on the background fades out. Now maybe we could clear it all out using the Hypno transition image. Do that, we simply just add in the blend parameter and say it's going to be Hypno. And doing that, we click out and we do get the Hypno blend out transition. So that's it. That's what we got for clearing our layers. So that concludes the episode here. And we'll pick up in the next episode where we start adding audio and sound effects into our little visual novels here. So look forward to that and I will see you guys in the next one.